Let's face it, losses are a real drag. In this week's Trading Tactics, we look at losses, and today I have some real motivation for you to keep them small. Okay? My name is Richard Lee, and I manage the stockradio.com.au website for you, where we manage a, uh, we run a quant strategy based on high probability signals to create a trading edge. What do I do? I use my 40 years of experience to educate investors on such things as price analysis, risk management, disciplinary techniques, systems, behavioural analysis, processes, trading models and portfolios, and of course, expectations management, management, and we all need a bit of that. All these issues are brought together on my website to help you understand the market better, and we have our unique trading centre that leads by example to show you how we put it all together in real time, live trading examples. Okay, so let's get to the markets. So first off, we go to our format. Um, this week, we just go through the normal overseas markets, look at the ASX 200, look at stock radar, some, stock, some Australian stocks for you, and we go into trading tactics. And here I've got the little guy with his little chart there, talking about cutting losses and running profits. The process should be kept as simple and easy as possible for you to manage and run. Okay, so I'm gonna look at that a little bit later on. But firstly, let's get straight to the markets. And we go straight to our Joe Jones, and there's not a lot of change happening here. The trend is up. We've had a bit of selling down here a few weeks ago, testing this trend. We brought it down with the buyer to come straight back in, and you can see some solid buying here, and it's pushed it straight back to the highs. No real problem there. NASDAQ similar. The trend is still intact, showing all the trending attributes we need to show you. Good volume, good, good trend advance, and moving average is, is, holding above, is holding below the price. And even though this has slowed a bit, not a real concern unless it goes below zero. So at this stage, it's just a slowing of the trend which we can see up here. So NASDAQ is fine. Uh, let's get to Brent crude, which is a very exciting one at the moment. We're really pushing hard at this level up here around uh, $80. We now got through it. Bit of a down day uh, last night, but not too concerned. The trend is up. This volume is phenomenal, and the uh, momentum is kicking high. Crowds are getting back into this one. So a break at this level here, which we've seen as a major resistance level for a while. We've seen this beautiful trend the last uh, the last ooh, year and a half, uh, pushing this uh, crude price up. And it looks quite exciting as, to, as we get through here there's not a lot of resistance above so uh, at this stage we're hanging on to our energy stocks that we have at the moment okay copper's been a bit of an odd one it went racing back to those highs bang 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 and looked like sure enough it was going to go straight through but sure enough it does exactly the opposite turns around and comes back down again just the way we like it uh, okay so that's copper for the moment it's still in this in this trading pattern so we've got no resolution as to yet we've got good support here and obviously we've got some selling up here because we can see this big week here of buying that pushed it up and just the amount, same amount of volume push it back down again so a little bit of nervousness there just be careful um, of copper at the moment but it's it's probably okay but for the moment we might see some more corrective behavior there Okay, gold, I wouldn't worry about, showing no inflation response at all. Uh, it's, it's neutral to down. The pressure is still down on this stock because we've got lower highs, lower highs, and this L is still holding at S1, but for the moment, uh, we still have no resolution there at this stage. Nothing really outstanding in any of these indicators here to suggest that we're going to turn around and go piling back up again. So um, there's lots, lots of uh, work for gold to do. Okay, let's get to the XJO. Now, it's... Um, it's actually done pretty well, realistically. It's uh, We've come back here, we've seen a little correction back, which is fine. Uh, we've had a good trend up here. It's come back and it's held the support at the old highs, which is a really good sign. And we're just edging our way back up to this R1 level again. So the trend challenge has been met and accepted, and uh, it's fine. So we just keep watching this one for the moment, go up, it's held above the average. So there's no real problem here for the ASX 200 at this stage. Um, the portfolio is down, down one this week to 76 of the 188 stocks we covered, um, 167 stocks and 21 EF, ETFs. Um, five out of five stocks, let's get rid of that, uh, in the five stock portfolio, eight out of 10 in the 10 stock portfolio, and the conservative is now down to seven out of 20, so a little bit of whittling off there. The sectors, we've still got property, banks, and uh, diversified finance. The banks are sort of stuck under the radar a bit. They've been so strong for over a year now, or for about a year, and we sort of forget that, but they've been probably very, very good support for this market because they take up a fair chunk of it. So we're going to have a little bit of a look at those later on. Um, our building our portfolio is up about 12.6% as of yesterday. Um, it'll come back up a little bit today. I would think we've had uh, Washington Sol Patterson fell out, a record came in. So we've got a new set of, uh, well, we've got four stocks still the same and one new stock in there for that uh, portfolio. 
Okay, now let's get to some stocks. Okay, first off, we have JB Hi-Fi, which is our little review stock at the moment. And again, because I've sort of blown this up a little bit so you can have a good look at it, but we really have got, you know, the trend intensity rating has moved up to plus five, minus five from minus eight. So we've had a little bit of a bounce here, but we've really got this moving average here. We've got all this work over here, and this really is what I call a distributive pattern, which means the smart money is selling into the rallies. Which so it's a clear pattern of distribution selling. I spent clear wrong, and I apologise for that. But that's what happens: is the smart money starts selling and puts pressure on this level here. So this is a level. We do not want to see fail at this stage. And JB Hi-Fi has not been reacting to good news, so we're fairly wary of that. If I just now whack the indicators on there, we can just see there's nothing really outstanding about any of the volume here or anything uh, on the momentum side. So still, still a stay away situation for JB Hi-Fi. Well, we've got a boomer here, an aristocrat, which is when one we've been in for a long time, uh, since sort of uh, August, September last year. It's up about 70%. Um, it just keeps rallying, this is, you know, trends are trends and they just, when they do it, they do it and you just hang on to them, you just don't have to look at them, you just raise your stop every week. But this one is a great one. We've got blue sky above here, above the old highs. It's rallied from about $40, $36, to up near $50 now, well, 48 57 it closed out yesterday and it's just done another big deal by Paytech in London to further consolidate its position in the online uh, gambling area. So um, aristocrats looking very good, trend and intensity rating is plus eight. Again, the, the indicators are all useful, but really it's where our stop goes, uh, which is the most important part. So it all looks okay. We've had a fairly heavy batter selling here, which did push the price down a little bit and it's been uh, met with some more buying, which has pushed the stock up again. Because the volume's low and the price has gone up, it means it's hard to get stock again. So those sellers have probably disappeared. And you can see the momentum index is very, very positive up here. There, So Aristocrat is still trending high and looking very good. One of the things that we love about this market, when markets trend like this, they really deliver the goods for us. These are the ones that make a big difference. The next one I want to look at is WiseTech, which we bought a while ago on a big strength uh, thing. And I think a lot of people might have been wary of that. But it's held up very well. Um, you can see here very, very good demand for this stock. We had a good bounce and good volume. Momentum index kicked really high, strongly, which is a great sign for it. So this is just really uh, a matter of holding on to this stock at the moment and letting it do its thing. And whether it has another growth spurt like what we've seen before back here, I don't know. But this is a very good corrective pattern here, which is now broken out of. So it's moving ahead fairly well, wise tech, no real problem there. Okay, Helios we saw a couple of weeks ago. It started coming back off those highs. Uh, up around uh, 5.50. Uh, these are the old highs that were struck in 2013, 2015. If I just go right back there to give you a look, you can see those two highs here, and this is really where we are. And so it's no surprise that we are receiving some resistance, some selling resistance here. So we had this spurt here, then we changed our price action a bit, and it did come down, came down, we saw some heavy selling here. It's just held above our stop loss. So we're still in the stock. Now we get to an interesting stage with every stock where we have a big run up, comes back a bit, a bit of selling, and then it tries to rally again. Now, this is an interesting stage now. Will it break through the highs or will it fail and collapse? So, you know, you really just have to be very careful of this. At this stage, we've got a bit of heavy selling here. Uh, it's brought back the momentum index. We're still above the average. The jury's out a little bit. This is what I call a battleground. This is where the buyers and sellers are battling themselves out for supremacy to try and get on top of each other. So uh, the signal really is if it breaks the highs, then we look for the, the buyers to control again. If it breaks down below S1, then we're looking for the sellers to, to push the price down a bit further. But for the moment, trend intensity rating is still plus 9 for Helios. It's, it's in that health sector, which we like. Um, so the Jew is still out, but we're still hanging on to there for the moment, and uh, we're still in there as a stock pick. So Helios is okay. Dexus is another one I will look at. It was, it was sort of uh, crunched a little bit by the, uh, the rights issue, and uh, it's been sideways trading action, but still there's been some pretty good support for this. We've got a slight little uptrend just up here, which has been really, um, the buyers have just sort of been edging, edging higher. Not too overly confidently, but it was a bit of a knockback, this one, but it did hold above here. We entered it back here, uh, when we've got a good signal back here. And now we're starting to push above here, and we're trying to break out again. And we can see there's few weeks here, very, very good volume here, very strong, so there's good demand for here. Dexas is doing the right things at the moment, uh, so that's that's which is, which is good. So we're still edging higher, and we've also got momentum, which is holding its line pretty well. Trend intensity rating is plus seven for Dexas. 
don't give it away unless, you, unless uh, it hits a stop. And it hasn't done that, so we're hanging on to this one and we may see some further gains in that. Some of the property, property stocks have been moving pretty well. Uh, and I want to look at another one in a second that's a, new, that's a new one that I'm covering, which may be an opportunity if you haven't got into that sector as yet. But Texas looks okay to me at this stage. Now, what I want to have a look at is one stock is mineral resources. Now, we've looked at this shot stock quite a few times before and it really has demonstrated my uh, strategy of trading trends and getting out and protecting my capital and protecting my profit. So you can see here I've had three extensive trends here, a 30% trend, a 13% and 22%. Now this is all within a couple of years, or not even a couple of years, but you can see I stop and protect here, I protect here. So I'm locking in my profit each time, each time, each time, because at some stage this is what's going to happen and I do not want to be involved in this as you know. I am risk averse and I'm going to show you even more as to why that is so a bit later on. But we can see here again the volume has been enormous on this one, a bit like BHP. But Mineral Resources was caught out a little bit with the quality of its iron ore and it's receiving a lot less than it thought it was going to get. So uh, the market's taken a dislike to that and pushed it right back down, almost a 50% correction for this whole rally at this stage. But this is a thing that I just don't want to sit through. I'd much rather wait for this to happen and at some stage, Mineral Resources is a good stock. It will, it will reverse its trend, it will do a trend reversal and will get a signal, but not for the moment. And we got out of this one here up here at the opening of price here and turned neutral so we protected our profit and stayed in. And that's the way my strategy works for when I'm trading, okay? So this is how we protect against a major decline. We never, never are involved with them. And especially when you see this evidence here of below the average, huge volume, momentum diving back to zero, it's really quite a nasty picture here. So we'll just let this play out and we'll get our opportunity later on. Trend intensity rating has sagged to minus eight from mineral resources. So um, that's why I do what I do. It's my strategy. It's not a perfect, it's not what everyone else does, but it's the way I do it. And um, that's how it works. Okay. Now, the next one I want to look at is uh, Growth Point. This is the one that we just started covering not long ago. Uh, sorry, we just covered this one not long ago. And um, so I just thought I'd show you this one because it's quite an interesting uh, pattern here on Growth Point. So this is a, a, a property stock and uh, we, 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 we've banged up to our highs again here again. I just want to show you the longer term picture for Growth Point as to what it's been doing. Now, you can just see for years and years and years this stock since 2010 has been trending, trending up. The only real significant event in this chart is, is, is COVID. COVID brought it back from $450 to about $253. Okay, ever since then, apart from that, this stock has trended higher. Okay, so I'm now looking at this as an opportunity because it is obviously a good stock, people like it, and we haven't got involved in this one yet because we've only just started covering it. But if it starts to break through these old highs here, that's obviously a new high signal and we do exactly what we do with new highs. We enter them with our, with our risk management uh, stops in place. So this has got high lows, high lows pushing into here. There's a bit of volume here pushed in here. We're starting to get a bit of activity at these highs here, which is a good thing because it means it's being tested and challenged. Um, momentum is still above zero. So really, it's above the average. All things considered here, if this breaks through, this will get a trend intensity rating, a qualifying trend intensity rating. So Growth Point is one that's certainly worth watching um, because it is a, it has been a very good trending stock in the past and this was the only real concern and we all know that fear can do anything to markets and it did kill this one considerably. But we're back to the highs and it looks like we're gonna start motoring along again. Okay, now, the next one I want to talk to you about is Blackmores. This is a controversial stock, no doubt. And if you don't want to play with this one, then don't play. But however, it does behave pretty well technically. Okay, so we've got good trends. We've got good accumulation patents here. We've built a perfect base down here. We've got a clear resistance level here. And now we start starting to break through. So just back here, you can see, well, as a stock cycle goes, downtrend, accumulation, uptrend, distribution, and, all, and the cycle goes on. So now we've gone from downtrend to accumulation. Now we enter potentially a buying, uh, a, um, a trending phase, an uptrending phase. So the buyers are struck here. We've had the big base here, which is great. The buyers are struck here, pushed it through here. And I know there's a lot of boardroom fracas going on at the moment. Uh, and I can't tell you what the outcome's going to be. All I can do is tell you what price is doing. And price is going up, even though we came off a little bit this week. It's still been going up. And we can see there's been some reasonable volume here. If I just push this up a little bit here, you can see there's been some reasonable volume. 
Bit of, bit of selling pressure here, but it's been swept aside and the buyers have come back in here again, which has been good. Momentum's kicked above zero. So this is where your alignment of the stars occurs. Now we've got all this evidence back here saying this is what's happening, downtrend accumulation. So we're just sitting back, waiting for the break to come. And it's come now, and as it comes, we get it move above the average, we get volume kick up and momentum kick up. So there's, there's something happening here. Whether we get it right or not, we don't know, but we just work with our stop and uh, hope we are entering a trending phase and uh, the stock will continue higher. So Blackmore's is one of the ones I don't cover. It's a smaller stock, but it is an interesting situation and it's certainly worth watching, although it is a little bit of a high price stock, but it's an interesting one. Okay, so that's Blackmore's uh, and that's what that's doing at the moment. So for now, uh, I'm now gonna go to trading tactics. I wanna talk a little bit about losses and uh, why it's so important that I keep it to an absolute minimum that I can, okay? So first thing what I'm gonna go through um, is the trend system is your ally because markets move in trends and that's what I focus on. I will trade trends and when it stops trending, I get out. So I just want to look at this one book here, which is a, a book that I started off reading. It was released in 1978 by a guy called J. J. Wells Wilder Jr. A very good book and it has little uh, indicators on here for um, volatilities, relative strength indexes, all sorts of things in here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is a very good book and it also has your you how, it all, how it all works, it has worksheets, it has a whole lot, it has all rules and definitions for you to look through. And in the back of this book, there's a very important section which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Okay, so, but this book is a very good book. As I said, it has volatility, directional movement, um, parabolic, uh, swing indexes, all this sort of stuff. And it's a really good, simple book to look at uh, if you're interested in following some of those indicators. Now, the first thing to grasp when trading is to don't lose money. And I'm going to come back to this book in a minute. But the first thing to lose is you don't lose money. Because if you lose your money, you're not in the game. This is why I hate losing money. Why? Just contemplate this for a second. The market is always taking out and never gets back. It's a zero-sum game, which means when you win, costs are subtracted. When you lose, costs are added. So everywhere you turn, the market's taking money out of you. So to make profits is hard, let alone when you start losing money, clawing your way back. Okay, so this is what it is, a zero-sum game. Now, let's just look at this. Now, I'm sure you might have all seen this before, but it's very important to look at this because losses get exponentially harder to recover from. The bigger the losses, the harder to call back. So if I lose 5% of my capital, I've got to get, I need 5.3% of what's left over to get back. If I lose 50% of my capital, I need, on the amount of money that I've lost, I need to double that money to get back to where I was. And if I lose 90%, I need 567% to get back. But you can see what I mean here. It exponentially gets harder and harder to claw your way back the bigger your losses. So I don't want to wear drawdowns of 40, 50% that don't come back. I would rather get out and get back in. That's the strategy I do. So it's your money and you don't want to lose it. And you only get one chance. It's not like the, the coffers are replenished every time you, you want to get some more money. If you lose it, it's gone. Okay, and to get back is very, very hard. So it's really important. Um, I have this uh, little table sitting on my desk at home just to remind me it's exactly what I don't, what, why I do what I do. Okay, so it's very, very important to remember. Okay, so three parts to a good technical trading plan, which we know. A technical system, a risk management system, and a discipline system. According to J. Wells Wilder, of the three, the third is the most important and the hardest to do. Okay, and in the back of this book here, here's a little section on capital management. And this is where he talks about stops and the, and the importance of them. And being able to not just set them, but to be able to implement them. Okay, so this, this is what I read on about all the time, the discipline to make sure you hit your stops and don't let those stops get too big because they're trying to claw back. And psychologically, it's, it's really quite a, a has de detrimental effects on you. Um, so just trying to keep a clear slate and also the fact that you do the right thing rather than the wrong thing like against your trading plan rules is another psychological barrier we need to get through. So um, as, as I said before, this discipline system uh, is really the most important part of what you do. Okay, now I talked about the banks before. Um, they have been a stalwart for this, uh, for this market. But I just wanted to show you, this is the table out of my uh, Trend Intensity report, which I put out every week, because I'm a weekly trader. 
Uh, and I just want to show you how, what the banks look like at this stage. They've been steady rises since pretty well late last year. If you look at the top stock here, well, just to go through the table again for you here, every column here, you can just highlight the question mark and we'll explain to you what each column does. Okay, but CBA, and there's a chart you can get if you click on there. Trend intensity rating is nine. Yes, it's a stock pick. It ended on the 23rd of November 2020 at 79.79. Okay, now it's 104.88. My, my, this, this is, here's my stop loss and my stop profit. If it is a stock pick, which says yes here, then this will be either a stop loss or a protect profit. And at this stage, we're protecting profit because this is well above the buy price, okay? About 25% above, sorry, 31% above, and we've got about 350 worth of dividends to add to that. So this is the information that I do. This is how I bring all the things that I do together and I monitor all my stocks and I know exactly where my stop losses are. So when I come on the weekend to do my work, I look at CBA, I look at the current price, I look at the, the stop, do I need to raise a stop? Is this an exit or an entry? This will tell me exactly what to do. So I do that and on Monday I execute these trades. So I'm not, I'm not involved in the market when I'm making these decisions, which is important. But the thing about this is the banks, 31%, 33, 35, 31, and even uh, BAQ 31 and Westpac 29%, they've all done that in a year, which is a very, very good return, plus the dividends we haven't even um, added into there. So. This really has been a very good underlying support for our market, I think. Although we've got, we've got tech stocks jumping everywhere and resource stocks jumping everywhere. These stocks have just been the store and we've been into these ones for a while. So this is how my tables work and I come through all my sectors on the trend intensity report just to give you an idea. And this is how I put it all together in my tables and how I monitor the market. Okay, so that's it there. So, so running profits and checking losses and that's how it's done. Plan, plan, plan. Play your cards right, come and join us at Stock Radar. Protect your profits and cut your losses and we'll make sure you get dealt a good, card, uh, good hand of cards at Stock Radar, the best hand we can deliver you anyway. Okay, so that's really what I've got for you today. Um, I hope you understand the thing about the losses. Just keep them small. Uh, and you can always get back in later on, whatever it might be. Okay, so firstly is don't be reckless. Make sure you have a plan, okay? At Stock Radar, we provide a plan template the result of which is reflected in the Trading Centre page and the portfolios that we've run for over 18 years. Okay, This is where we put into effect the plan to succeed. With systematic control of profits and losses driven primarily by a risk management process. Analysis gets you in and risk management controls the trade from then on in. Okay, Yes, the focus on simple things such as weekly data and stringent risk management process are the key uh, the key for stock grader. That is our strategy. Okay, good luck for the trading week this week. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you all learned something today and I look forward to seeing you all next week. See you later.